Hello everyone, I'm Kai. Today, I'd like to share some of my recent hands-on experience using CrowdCode for project development. So first, let me walk you through how I actually use web coding in my workflow. At the start, we usually have a pretty vague requirement, maybe just a sentence or two or a simple idea. For example, something as simple as build a YouTube ad that take a video link and create actionable to-do list. Then I use LLM like Crawl to help analyze the requirements, design the system, and play out the development tasks. Next, once I have a clear task list, I run my custom command slash kc spread task to break it into smaller pieces. If those pieces are already clear, I just run another command kc increment 03, that's a task number, and it automatically takes care of the rest, creating the git branch, writing the code, testing it, running the code review, commit to the code, and finally open a PR on GitHub. Okay, so that's my workflow for web coding. The biggest problem with web coding is that AI's code output can be unpredictable. Getting good code sometimes feel like winning the lottery. Now, AI is incredibly powerful, but we still need to guide it with coding standards, best practice, and clear documentation. Through my own experience, I found that Kiro, an ID from Amazon, has this approach called Spec-Driven Development, SDD, that really solves this problem. It's basically three stages. First is the requirement phase. That's where we take a rough idea and turn it into clear user stories and acceptance criteria using something called EAIS notation. Then we move on to design phase. We take that requirement stock and map out the system architecture, the technical details, the code components, and so on. And finally, implementation planning, checkable task, each with clear description and outcome. Once we have this complete clear spec, letting AI handle the development becomes so much easier. I've actually turned these three SDD steps from Kiro into CrowdCode subagent, and I've put all this related code into this project called CrowdCode template. It also includes the other subagents, custom commands, and hooks I used. I will be sharing this with the community later on. Next, let's open up this code and take a look at this template. Inside the agent folder, I've got the Kiro related sub-agent I just mentioned. Requirements, design, planning. For more general purpose sub-agents, I usually keep them in my home directory under this part so I can share and reuse them across different projects. Let's open the crawl code and run the slash agent command. Here you can see the Kiro SDD related subagents. There are two ways to call a subagent. One, type at agent name. Two, just type the agent name and the crawl code will automatically recognize it. Now let's try them out. First, use the Kiro requirement agent. Kiro requirement agent. Let's try it with our two sentence requirement. Press enter and run it. Here's how it works. CrowdCode will generate the requirement document and save it under doc spec and a future name directory. You can see the requirement.md file here. Usually I review this file and keep talking to CrowdCode until I'm happy with it. Next, we move on to a design agent, Kiro design agent. The Kiro design agent works the same way. It generates a design.md file in the same directory. Once the design spec is ready and confirmed, we go to the planning stage with the Kiro planning agent. Kiro planning agent. You will see a tasks.md file compared to pure web coding. This is way more reliable. Now, when we try to execute multiple tasks at once, the context window size becomes a concern and the model's performance can degrade. Splitting them into smaller tasks fixes and also make human review much easier. So, I built a custom command for that. Let's open it up and take a look. The so logic actually really simple. I just tell it where to read the tasks.md file and then splits the tasks in parallel. Let's try it out, this command. And here you can see it splits the task into subtasks, adds numbering, and keep everything super clean. For a relatively simple task, I usually use a single command to handle the entire development process. With web coding, most of the time, we are just waiting for the model to output a code, which can be a bit of a waste of time. So I wrapped all the development steps for a task into one command, so it can complete the whole things on its own. All I need to do is give it a task number. Let's take a look at this custom command. Based on the given tasks.md file, 
it decides whether to call the backend development agent or the front end development agent. If code review is required, it will call the code review agent. Let's take a close look at this sub agent. This is a Python backend agent. The prompt is a bit wrong, but it mainly defines the role of the Python backend developer. Along with my personal preference for using Python, my go to tech stack, and sections on core responsibilities, development approach, and technical expertise. In addition, I've also defined a few other commonly used sub agents front end expert, code review, and the technical documentation write agent. I recommend define your own sub agent based on your own development needs and preferences. For example, Next.js, TypeScript agent, Superbase agent, and so on. Let's go back. Then we have the full development flow read the task.md file, create a git branch, develop test, and run the code review. Test it again, and finally commit the code and open GitHub PR. Next, let's see how this command runs. Since it takes quite a while to complete, we will look at the record from when I ran it earlier. For example, case implement 03 task. When the command starts, the first does some thinking. It basically follows the exact steps I just described in the command. Step 1, it reads the task to understand exactly what needs to be done. Then it creates a git branch. Since this is a backend task, you can see it calls a Python backend subagent. We can see that after finishing the development work, it runs a code review agent. After the review, it calls a Python backend agent again to make improvements to the code. I think that's really smart. Then it runs the test. Once the test passed, it commits the code and create a GitHub PR. Let's open the GitHub repo and check here is the PR of that task. Looks great. Now let me show you another very useful custom command, bug fix. With this, after you create an issue on GitHub, you can simply pass the issue number and it will automatically handle the fix. This works by using GitHub client GH. So you can work with GitHub right from your terminal without opening a browser. In this command, it fetches the issue's details, analyzes the descriptions, finds the related code, and applies a minimal fix. Now let's try it. Suppose I have an issue on GitHub Ask me to improve the readme file. In the terminal, I will run KC bug fix with issue 1. You can see it's successfully reading the issue content and immediately starting the fix. And that's it, super smooth. Now let's talk about the cloud code hooks. I once saw someone online accidentally delete their entire workspace just running an im-if command in cloud code. So how can we avoid something like that? Hooks let us run our own shell commands at different points in cloud code's lifecycle. For example, we can check a bash command before they run to improve safety. Or you can automatically format a file right after editing it. It's a really powerful feature, and you can even build your own mini automations with it. Here's useful tips I want to share. We usually configure hooks in the hook section of the settings.json file. At first, I put the entire script directly inside the command's codes, but that made debugging a pain. After checking a line, I found the best practice is to put the logic in a separate shell script file and just reference it here. Let's look at a few custom hooks I've made. First, a bash command safety checker script. It reads the JSON input from the tool call, detects the tool name, and blocks a dangerous command. I actually generated this script using crawl code. Next, the formatted script. Since I mostly work with Python and TypeScript, it formats those files automatically after edits. Once you have hook script, you just add their path in the settings JSON file. For example, in the post tool use, I set a formatted share path. In pre tool use, I pointed to the deny shell script. And for notification, I have it pre a sound when crawl code conversation finishes. Now let's give it a try. Open crawl code and try running rm rf doc. And as you can see, my predefined hook blocks it. And yeah, that's basically how hooks work. Feel free to use this as a template for your own. That's it for my crawl code workflow tips. The template is available in our community. Check it out and see how it works for you.